welcome to Amateur Tech Talk Podcast. My name's Dean Hansen. And this is Ronnie here. And, <laughs> so how you doing, man? This is episode number two, September 17th, I believe, right? Episode two. Yeah, I feel good. I feel good. I'm glad we're back. Um, it's great. I can't believe we made it, actually. <laughs> I know, right? It, it seems a little weird. You know, a lot's happened. When we first did the first episode, um, we weren't even we weren't even sure we were going to put it up. You know, we didn't have like the the feeds all lined up quite right yet, and uh, we not a whole really, lot of planning on that one. Yeah, we? we didn't have a whole lot of plans, and um, really, when we recorded, it was like two days after we thought up the idea, and it was like, I hope this goes up, but maybe not. But now. <laughs> We're like established, right? <laughs> yes, we are two weeks into it, you know, and it feels a little bit better. This is I definitely think. going up. Um, yes. Definitely yes. will be uploaded tonight. Um, people Very will probably good. listen to it on the 18th of September. Well, anyway, yeah, we're at September 2015 here. And um, like I said, my name's Dean Hansen. This is the Amateur Tech Talk podcast. And uh, I think we're going to jump right into it. But I really wanted to talk kind of mainly about the the show first off like what right. what we've done in the last two weeks and um uh we officially are on twitter which is cool so yeah. i mean you could reach out to us on twitter at amateur tech cast because amateur tech talk was taken uh -huh. so you can twitter that guy and tell him he's not the real deal um and we've got <laughs> an email amateur tech talk at gmail.com you can email us and tell us what you think of the show uh give us ideas of stuff products to research and talk about on the show yes please do people yeah if you want to be interviewed or you know anything that would help the show feel free to email us at amateur tech talk at gmail.com mm -hmm. you think it'd be like support at amateur tech talk dot com but we don't pay the extra eight dollars <laughs> <laughs> gmail's free like gmail is free and cleaner and nicer and right <laughs> yeah, i think it's good it works. um the official website is amateur tech talk dot libsyn dot com and um more excitingly we are officially embedded and available on itunes stitcher radio and tune in all three. You see what two weeks do for us? Yeah, Holy cow. we're on all three major Made platforms. Huge progress! Holy cow! I'm gonna upload every episode to YouTube. I plan on it. I don't know if I will. I've done the first episode to YouTube. I think it helps. Um, and you to know, word out. Yeah, and if people want to listen that way, it's kind of more designed to listen podcast style, like with your phone in your car. But people listen their own way. Um, but yeah, Absolutely. if you go to any of those websites. Or any of those platforms, iTunes, Stitcher, and TuneIn. Just search Amateur Tech Talk, and Dean and Ronnie will pop up. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty That's cool, right? right? Um, so how you doing, man? So not too bad, you know. Just a lot of stuff has happened, you know. You had the Apple event yeah. a week, or when was it? This week. Right. And uh, a that? lot of stuff to talk about, for sure. Oh, yeah. How about you? How do you feel? I feel pretty good. Um, you know awesome. I'm being tortured right now trying to figure out what phone i'm going to be using two weeks from now <laughs> that's right that has been our, our for the last couple of days anyway how many hours literally do you think me and you have spent talking about these three phones that we're oh. going to talk about right now dude it's it feels like a, <laughs> day, a whole day you know? <laughs> like 24 <laughs> hours um, I would say. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to decide what my next phone is going to be. It's September. It's upgrade time, right? Every phone in the world comes out in September. Yes. Even the new Nexuses are coming out. I wasn't even aware of that. I guess they're announced September. Um, yep. And uh, the new iPhones are out. The Apple event was cool. I, I think there's a lot to talk about in the Apple event. Yes, um, go ahead. Get right into it, Dan. And while I'm on the subject of Apple, <laughs> I listened to the last podcast, number one, and I kept saying Mac. Like I said, there's a Mac event coming up, and Mac put out puts out good products. And I'm like, Dean, you're not an idiot. It's not Mac. It's not the company. <laughs> I remember <laughs> That's that. like their their laptop that's like their line of products you know yes part of their products <laughs> so i was like i wanted to correct that i promise i'm not as dumb as i sound <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so apple puts out a lot of new stuff 
on yes. September 9th. They had a two-hour event. I watched it live. It was pretty cool. That's crazy, huh? That's pretty long. It's yeah. not been like this for, for a while. And they didn't do any updates. You know, I was almost like, I'm not even going to turn it on for a half an hour. They're just going to talk about how they're the greatest company in the world and how they have a trillion downloads of everything. Usually, and this I'm is like, our sales. And yeah. This is how much we give them to developers. And... Right. He jumped right into it. He didn't do any of that crap. It's just like, we got products all day long. We got a busy day. <laughs> and it went like two hours and ten minutes or something. It was nuts. Pretty long, actually. I'm not gonna lie, everyone. I didn't watch the show. <laughs> that was on purpose. No, um, yeah. I mean, he, he he wanted to talk about it, kind of coming into it as the uh, the guy asking questions, I guess. Absolutely, yeah. Just want to kind of like get a feel for it, what you saw, and and, and yeah. see what we can. I mean, I'm aware of the products, but I didn't watch the keynote, essentially. Well, one thing that excited me about it, honestly, it's funny, because the most exciting thing that came out of it to me was the cheapest thing that came out of it, which was the Apple TV. The Apple TV. Yeah, I think the Apple TV looks the coolest out of everything. I mean, everything else was kind of standard. The, the S-Line phones look the exact same. They just have their upgrades, right? Um, yeah, it almost feels like the Apple TV got the huge, you know, redesign. And and it's priced right. And it's priced right. It's exciting for sure. Yeah, I really kind of want one, and it won't be that big a deal. 149 you can go out and get an Apple TV. 32 gig, right, for 149 I believe? I believe so, and which you, is impressive. Yeah, you can just go out and get that Apple TV for 149 and You can't even get an iPhone 6S with 32 gigs, you know? It, it's... Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, Interesting. Yeah, that's <laughs> how they do that. How they, one product they would do it just right, priced it completely well, mm -hmm. and then the iPhone. It's still Weird. the same formula, you know, like sixteen gigabytes. Yes, sixteen. Sorry, I don't want to get into it right away. <laughs> oh but my I still god. Still have a beef with that. Oh my! Everybody does. I don't even know <sighs> how. How are they getting away with that? It's a you, six hundred and fifty. Forty nine dollar phone. Shoot video four K. It's on that thing. We're three months away from two thousand sixteen, and it's sixteen gigabytes. Sorry, just, <laughs> just had to bring it up. All right. I oh don't my god. So yeah, the Apple TV is great. Right. Thirty two gigs starting price. Yeah. That is kick ass. When I heard I it was hundred, all the products should be at least thirty two gigs that they sell. But yeah, it should be. But yeah, and when I heard it was one forty nine, I'm like, okay, it's gonna be like three gigs or something <laughs> ridiculously dumb, you know? No, I like can eight gig is what I was actually thinking. Eight, yeah, that's what it was. I think at the very beginning. Yeah. What are you most excited about though about the device? Like, what did games, you like the most? Games. Gaming. It, it, it's it's cool. I mean, it's not gonna be a powerhouse game. What what chip did it have in it? The A A eight X from the iPad Air two. Ooh. I believe, and that's amazing. Yeah, Again, price chip. point, it's like, how? But... And it might have just been the A8 chip from my phone. Um, yeah, yes. it, it's, uh, it's a good, it's big. It's physically big. The, it? the, it's bigger than the old one. I don't know if you saw that. Um, but yeah, cool. it's, it's, a, it's kind of interesting because everybody else is are, are small. You think of like Chromecast, it's like a USB stick. Like a dongle, right? <laughs> yeah, and then this thing's going to be big, but, you know, who cares? Which is good. <laughs> who yeah. cares? You know, I mean, it, yeah. <laughs> it, it's a powerhouse, you know. It, you can play to... games on it, and it, it's got a remote that has all kinds of, you know, it, it has all kinds of sensors in it that can, you know, tilt and, what am I trying to say, the accelerometer in it. And Absolutely. it's got a touch face. It's not like a LCD screen. You don't get any display. It's not a display, but it's got a touch-sensitive um remote that looks really intuitive really easy to use and then the remote is your it paddle almost, when you play games you play doesn't games it remind you a little bit of the wii like just really cool a little bit yeah out, yeah accelerometer touchpad it's gonna work good that's what i'm happy about it's gonna be something that you obviously mainly use to watch netflix and and you know videos and stuff it's your apple tv but, but your casual gaming though i mean you, you saw a preview of the games as they're doing the keynote what uh, did you think of that like how was the experience with the it game? looked fun it's kind of like basic games that you'd play on an ipad or your phone um okay but you have a paddle with physical buttons and accelerometer and you know what i mean so and then yes. it's on your tv in 1080 i, I kind of thought I, 4k it's lacking 4k though all these 4k tvs and how do we even watch anything on there 
Apple's not really into that just yet. No. It's kind of interesting. But that would have been cool because then it would have had to been it would have made it way more expensive. I think so. It would have been two ninety nine. Plus ten eighty still looks good. I mean let's yeah. ask everybody, you know, it would it, it's still doable. Right. But I'm hoping by the next by next time they put another device out, hopefully yeah, four K is definitely standard. And the Apple TV, what they 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 come out every few years. It's not like the phones where they're just like pumped out every twelve months. But I'm pumped out for this one. I would, I honestly and seriously consider buying one of these. Yeah, one forty nine. It, yeah, it's just a good deal. I think they're coming out in October. I think they're supposed to be they're rolling out. Maybe they're already out. I don't remember every detail from the two hour event. I'm looking at the website right now, and it says coming soon. So it must be around yeah. the time. The other stuff is going to get released. All the, the the one thing we know for sure, everything will be released by Christmas. <laughs> or else, yeah. why even make it? You know, holidays. And that's yeah, why, yeah, and that's why everything's coming out right now. That's why there's so much to talk about. You know, oh, goodness, yes. um, just so many things. Um, but yeah, the, I'll, like I said, the phones are cool. You know, they're basic upgrades. And absolutely no surprises. All the rumors were like a thousand percent correct. It's like we already knew. <laughs> everything um not on the ipad pro though that had that was lacking force touch which they call 3d touch is that what they call it 3d touch it's stupid just call it force touch that's what you called it on the freaking watch yeah if it comes why change the name correct (laughs) correct um but yeah that was it didn't have it we talked about the iPad Pro. You wanted, like, some huge, like, hybrid of the MacBook Pro and everything. That would have been so cool. They call it a Pro. They need to stick to a really Pro And cool I was design. like, I was like, it, it'll have Force Touch and maybe USB-C, and the other one won't, and that'll make it the Pro. And you're like, that's not enough. And they didn't even do either of those. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally just a big iPad, but it, it does have a power, more powerful processor. Absolutely. Um, I heard it's more powerful now. It's going to have more RAM. Yeah. It can do more tasks. Multitasking looks multitasking. amazing on it. The iOS multitasking is only available on that. We were wondering if it was going to be on the phone too. Really? Yeah. And I just well, up- I just upgraded to iOS 9 yesterday. I guess it's starting to become a, an iPad with the Pro worthy, you know. Yeah. <laughs> if it's the only know. thing that can multitask. But... Yeah, we'll it, see how that works long term though. So you're saying that Adding the features, adding USB-C and making it force touch is, is not worthy, but giving it multitasking is worthy of being a pro? Absolutely. I no. think that's the right way because you're getting closer to what a computer can do. Yeah. Uh, and that's what I wanted. There's no USB hybrid. on there. It's not a computer. You can't use it as a computer, but you know what I mean? Like using it, just putting it in landscape mode and just doing stuff, being able to do more than one thing at a time yeah. comfortably. I think that's... A lot like right. a laptop, you know. Yeah, I guess I'm multitasking on my computer now with there you go. everything flowing. And... and think about it. I have an iPad. I have an iPad Air. Yeah. And I cannot do any more multitasking. You have to do one thing at a time. And mm-hmm. I think that's exciting, actually. Multitasking is cool. I don't know if it's coming. Did it? Do you know if it was coming to the to the to just the normal iPad Air 2? Good question. I don't think it is. There was no videos, at least, about it. Yeah. The size is cool because, you know, they said that it its height is equal to the width of the iPad Air 2. So when you turn it sideways, it's kind of like holding two iPads next to each other in portrait mode. You know that what I mean? Cool. When that you're holding cool. it in landscape, it's like having two iPads in portrait. Not quite as long. It's not. It's like having one in... It's like <laughs> one and a half yeah, or maybe yeah. one and a quarter. But, but it kind of cool. works. For, yeah. Think about it. You turn it that sideways, you have your full iPad in portrait mode plus... This extra space on the side to do all that other stuff. You know what I mean? So That's going to cool. feel a lot like a, having a monitor in front of you. Like, think about uh-huh. a cool website. You'd be able yeah. to read everything perfectly, not zooming in. Yeah. Again, it's a cool device. I want to see it for myself. Their little Can't ke- wait for it to release. Yeah. Their little keyboard for it was not very, um, what's the yeah, word? Yeah, what did you think it, of the keyboard? It wasn't yeah. elegant, right? Okay. Like, they have their, everything they've made has this elegance to it like that is so simple and perfect uh-huh. everything you know i'm I just even like my keyboard i'm looking at for my mac is like simple elegant and perfect and then they come out and you and know it's like aluminum this, right on the yeah, mac mini um yeah exactly and then cool. like the uh you know and like you think of the smart covers like they invented this cover that was you know just so elegant and basic just basic but it had so many uses mm-hmm. for the ipad too and then 
So I was expecting something much cleaner, much more elegant, and then it's like it looks like a third party accessory <laughs> to me. It looks That's true. absolutely ugly when it's connected. Uh, have you seen these pictures? It looks ugly. Yes. I have one in front of me right now. It does look more like a simple um, keyboard for sure. It, yeah. it almost looks cheap, like you're saying. Uh-huh. You're right. And it's not. It's like $169. Are you serious? $169 It's like that. ridiculous. Maybe you can oh. check that number for me, but I think it's 169 and then the pencil is 99 uh, And it's one of those things that both of those things you're going to need, though. Yeah. As you really get into this world of multitasking you're gonna want both of those things absolutely <laughs> ah, i kind of wish it was a little bit better too yeah so it starts but at... what about the pen though what do you feel about the, the pencil, pencil looks or... like finally we have a stylus that you could actually use to like draw nice. you remember in the last episode i brought it up i said they're probably gonna come out with a pen which will be cool because we'll finally have one that works because you know the surface one is kind of ridiculous and yep. it's not that bad. It's the best one out there, and you can use it to write notes. But this thing actually looks like you're writing on it because they make things right. You have a really thin distance between where the pen touches and where you actually see it. The refresh rate doubles when you put the pen down there, so it has really? very, very low latency, very high quality. Um, I saw some demos of people using it, and it just looks the way that it that that type of operation should look. Um, awesome. you know, and it's got these tilt sensors on it. So as you, you know, change the angle, mm-hmm. it gets thicker. Like if you were using a pencil, you know what I mean? So if you're drawing and you angle it, it's going to be a thicker line, obviously pressure nice. sensitive and everything too. So, yeah, that helps a lot. Now that it's force <laughs> touch, you can enable more of those features. Into well, the, that's the thing is the two devices, right? The pro doesn't even have the 3d touch. Oh, it doesn't have 3D touch. And the, okay. the 3D touch on the phone is, I think it's it's not as uh, sensitive as we're all thinking. Like, it's going to have, like, all these parameters. I think it's just, like, an on-off type. You know, you, you, you t- tap or you press. There's no, like, in between. Yeah, like, it knows when you're tapping, basically. Right. Like, but when it, you're holding it. But I don't think it really knows the exact pressure you're pushing. It's, like, on-off. Oh, okay. You know what I okay. mean? Yes. Um, it's not, like... I don't I don't think that it runs that way where it's just like, oh, you're pressing with this much force and now you've upped it by 10%. You know, no, it's, it's like... <laughs> it's not like everyone, we have a sponge in our phone. <laughs> right, no, it's it's more, the way I understand it is more just, it's just like another input. It's like, it's like, it's just one off, it's like double tapping almost, but you're not double yeah. tapping, you know? Okay. It is kind of the more the way. Uh, the, so you don't feel like on an iPad you, you're going to miss uh, I would having like, that feature? They'll or? bring it. They'll bring it to the next one. They probably will. Um, the That's iPad, what I think, too. The iPad gets things a little later. The iPhone is what gets everything first. That's true now. Except for storage. <laughs> it, it, yeah. The most important part of having a phone well, is storage. So you the, can shoot your 4K video, your apps. It's just the easiest thing to... Upgrade too. How much is an extra sixteen gigs of storage at their cost? We're talking as a consumer. I'm disappointed. We're talking like a dollar, they, right? I mean, it can't they be. They own their solid state company. Yeah, they bought them. <sighs> that, what was that company? Some Israeli company, like two years ago. Yes, they bought their own company, and they're <laughs> upgrading every other storage in their product lineup except the phone. It must be on purpose. I always say. Yeah, it, yeah, it's to make money. That I mean that. A 16 Absolutely. gig solid state um, SSD in there is like like no money for them, right? Yeah. I mean, it literally is pennies. I think I, I just I can get one on Amazon, something 16 gig like that for like three bucks. You know what I mean? Yes. And so <laughs> we're going back to that again. But it feels like we're we're still like behind when it comes to that though. Like they bad. they want us to use their phones fully. Yeah. They had all these features, but the storage is going to affect a lot of what you do on that phone long term. Everybody, you, know? you have to buy as the a consumer. Gig. I feel like that's wrong, <coughs> and, and you know, yeah, have to complain about it. Hopefully, yeah, yeah you have to buy the sixty four gig. Yes, you just have hopefully, to. literally, you can't think of the phone as six forty nine at that point. No, nope, you have to. I don't always add that extra hundred dollars. <laughs> and I like the plus, so I got to add. Two hundred dollars. Yes. The phone I got would have been four hundred dollars with a two-year contract. Wow. <laughs> the price of the Moto X without yes, any we, contract. Can we talk about that? Do you? How do you feel about Verizon going away from contracts? And yeah, nobody has them but AT and T, right? 
I think so. Everybody Virginia dropped Virginia is the only place hanging on. You know, like, uh, who was, like, Cricket? And, and those companies had been doing it this way forever. Yes. And then T-Mobile joined in and just started taking everybody's business. And <laughs> now Verizon, I love their commercials. They act like it's, like, some new fancy idea, you know. It's like, dude, you're, like, the last one in the pool. Don't act like it was your idea to go to the pool. You know what I mean? I'm like, we're so cool. We're offering this, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but Verizon is by far the best quality network out there, in my opinion. Um, How do you feel, though, about not being able to get a subsidized phone anymore? Like some people, you know, some people like our parents and that. Yeah. They they don't buy phones every year. It was and nice because they, they could... would have benefited more from a two-year yeah. contract, in my opinion. Absolutely. If you want, didn't want to upgrade, if you were happy with a phone for 24 months then those contracts were really good for you. Yes. Um, you were getting free phones. Easy. Easy. Basically, yeah, it's a huge subsidize to get a phone for $200 that mm-hmm. would normally cost you 649 And And their plans have gone down to, but not as much to equal it. Does that does that sentence That's make true. sense? That's yeah, true. They, their plans have gone down. The sort of thing we offer cheaper plans now because we're not subsidizing it, but it's not. It didn't go down as but much. But as a consumer, as you're going to spend probably more. Yeah, in absolutely. the long term, absolutely, a uh, lot, a lot more actually, because their plan didn't come down that much. Maybe t- like ten or fifteen dollars a month. That's true. And bef- and you got to buy a whole phone now, right? Yeah. And so. Yeah. It almost covers for half of what you pay for a phone these days because yeah. a nice top of the line phone is going to run you, what, 25 to $30 a month? About 30 About yeah. 30 When you do those uh, interest free jump program types. That's and that's what I'm doing with T Mobile is their jump program, but I'm actually getting out of it this month. Yes. Can we talk about that? Yeah, because that's one thing that came cool out of the Apple event is they now have a. Upgrade program. Woo. Wow. <laughs> no, it's cool. You know, you can go in. That is surprising for a computer company, you know, to they put don't, out these plans. They don't make money on these. They're zero interest and, exactly. like, typically zero money down. And um, So how does it work? How, what do I have to do to right. get myself into that plan, dude? You just you would just go into an Apple store, which I'm going to be doing on the 25th on release date. I'm getting Congratulations. a new phone on release date. If that's the phone I get, I have it pre-ordered. <laughs> We're still debating that. I have that. two of them pre-ordered <laughs> at two different stores. We'll um, get into that. <laughs> but yeah, you would just go in and, and you would, it's a credit check, you know, and then uh, if you got basic, I, from what I understand, okay credit, you might, if, it, if your credit's kind of low you might have to put like a hundred down or something like that but okay so it's just like going to your wireless provider it's the exact same plan it's just way better because you're going through apple in my opinion it's about the same price but now i won't have to have jump added on to my t-mobile plan an extra ten dollars a month and well and it, the thing is is but i will be getting apple care which is like ten dollars a month you know when you think also, about okay. it, because you, you keep it for a year so you're gonna but which one would you rather have you know exactly right. so the price is about the same but it's just you're going through apple apple care is way better than jump hand, handset protection plan oh hands down you know what i mean <laughs> and and then you get to go to the store and get it which Plus there's customer little... service going into the apple store as opposed to going into a t-mobile cell oh my god talking to a t-mobile salesman as yeah. opposed to going into an apple store and also another another factor would be your your deductibles in that if you ever get to use that stuff way cheaper would it be cheaper to stay with apple right yes my deductible for verizon is like 189 dollars or something ridiculous Woo. But it's an eight hundred and fifty dollar phone. Yeah, that makes sense. But with Apple, it's not going to be that. High. I think it's ninety nine, if I remember right. Wow. Um. So yeah, definitely, that's just really better. exciting. That's going to open the doors for a lot of people to be able to get the phone. Yeah. They want. Yeah. And it'll make me. It'll make my <laughs> phone bill seem smaller, even though I'll be paying that other money out to Apple. But I would rather be paying it out to Apple. Exactly. And so. It, it, in the end, it, I'm, I'm not going to save any money, maybe $1 or $2 a month at best, but pretty much the same cost. I just get a better experience. And that's You'll just I'm get the saying. better experience, better company to go through. Mm-hmm. And if it does yes. break, cheaper, deductible. Absolutely. I mean, think about it. If this phone broke, I'm like, I got to go into T-Mobile tomorrow and like deal with uh, those clowns. You know what I mean? <laughs> And if, uh, if I'm on AppleCare, it's we, like, oh, they, they do this. Like, they we just like to mobile. You. That's the company we actually use right now. But, <laughs> yeah, their customer service is you know, something else. We're probably eventually going to – this this podcast is going to blow up and we're going to get sponsors. And T-Mobile <laughs> is going to be like, we're going to offer you guys 
all this money, and then they're going to listen to episode two and be like, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you guys bashing on us, calling us clowns. <laughs> but they got to get that stuff sorted out. I don't think they're the, the best right now. No, they just, they're just the, they're the best value right now. Absolutely. The you best get, value. I have unlimited 4G LTE. Yes. You know, and my bill's not that big, you know? Yeah. But how much that would be at Verizon? Just really quick. If they you don't even have go, it. You don't even have an unlimited you option. You can't do that. No. Well, you see, they're the best. Yeah. T-Mobile, you're hearing it. We we, we praise you in some <laughs> ways. <laughs> Sponsor oh, us. Um, so you're excited about that. You thought the moment you learned about um, Apple doing, um, what do you call that anyway? Um when they're going to let you get the phone through them. Yeah, and, and, it's an up, and it's an upgrade program, which is actually okay. better than Verizon's because Verizon doesn't even guarantee you they'll t- t- to upgrade every year. You know, like T-Mobile says, you you come into this and we'll guarantee you can upgrade every year you trade in. So basically they're guaranteeing you 50 per- the cost, Yeah, 50% yes. of a – they're saying we'll buy your phone back for 50% of retail 12 months from now. It's basically what they're saying. And that's a guarantee, which is yeah, good. as long as the phone isn't scratched like mine is. Yeah, or broken um, or water damage. Yeah, yeah. And, but then what they're saying – so it's a really good deal on Androids and not quite as good of a deal on iPhones because iPhones pretty easily get 50% of their value. That's true. But Androids don't. Yes. You know what I mean? And so, yeah. But anyway, um, but with Verizon, they don't even guarantee you that. They just say okay. you can upgrade within a year, but your phone has to be paid off. And it's a 24-month payment plan, so you'd have to pay double to do that. And then you trade it in for less so than half. So they'll uh, trade it in. They they might give you half, but they don't guarantee it, basically. They don't guarantee it, yeah. And I don't think they will give you half. You know, trade-ins is just like $200. So for. How do you feel with the Apple Upgrade program? Is that going to be something that is worth for somebody that's going to upgrade their phones every year? Or do you see it that's, better as keeping it for longer? That's what I'm doing. Um, okay. If you keep it longer, it's not like you're losing money. You're building equity in the phone. You're, that's true. You're paying down the phone more every month. And then, you know, it's like, it's just nice to do the upgrade. When you're upgrading every year on the dot, like I'm kind of doing, you're kind of just leasing the phone. <laughs> Literally. kind of how I think about it. I have this $31 phone payment that I'm just always going to make as long as I want to have a good phone. But I'm never going to have to come up with a $300 down payment or anything crazy. I'll just always be paying that. When you go in and get the new phone, you don't have to do anything else. You just keep paying what you were already paying. You know, That's true. You feel um, like it's part of the service plan, basically. Uh, like, exactly. Okay, I have a nicer phone with these people. It's going to cost me 30 bucks more. Yeah. I hear you. And then on the other side, doing the pretty much the exact opposite of the way I do it is how you do it. Okay. You know, you you buy used, um, cheaper Androids straight up. Uh, yeah. Because yeah. it's like you said, they don't hold their value as long. And mm-hmm. they're usually, compared to an iPhone anyway, a lot cheaper. Yeah. So you can go in and just get it. Yeah. And save you that $30 a month because in reality, you you know, all you had to come up with was $400 nowadays. You can get right. a pretty decent phone. So. Mm-hmm. But it's a lot easier than spending eight forty nine for the phone you want now. Right. An yeah. iPhone six S plus in gold. How do you feel about that? <laughs> oh. Oh, I almost don't want to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> no, it's no, good. I hear you. Um, I... So the gold phones are, are the dumbest color, right? It's um, more for yeah, like more feminine. Like yeah. I don't feel like a gold you know the... it's not really I, I know it is more feminine that's not what really worries me about it to me it seems more what, pretentious like pretentious. Got gold phone look at me that's you know? true like that's true. and anyway, like are you really that kind of a person hey look at me well i'm gonna have to be here in a few <laughs> weeks because that's the only freaking model i could get or pre-ordered okay. um so i pre-ordered i wanted the new iphone 6s and i went on to pre-order but sadly i was like two and a half hours late to the pre-order time in the middle of the night surprisingly yeah in the middle of the night not everybody's <clears throat> up but yeah i should have been there at 1 a.m i was there at like 4 a.m 3 a.m um because i, I just didn't wo- make <laughs> much of a difference but you know our listeners need to know like you go in there more than an hour later and you might not get what you want on yeah. those pre-orders and, crazy how yeah. busy it is well there's all these rumors saying that their their numbers they're pulling for these is going to break records and i'm like really they're going to break records with the s model that seems crazy yeah but i don't know the sales it's like a med yeah. refresh on their phone and yeah but you know it, eventually they add enough features that more and more people are interested yeah 
And, you know, the bigger phones are pulling people back um, from Android like they did to me. I went to Android for bigger screens and then... I what did you have tech. as a bigger screen for Android? Like, so I, had people a, know. I had the Galaxy S5 for about three, four, or five months. Um, yeah. That wasn't too bad. Um, it wasn't too good either. It, but you miss that size. You always tell me how you five, wish there was five a inch, phone. Five inch, 5.2, 5.1. That's like the right size. Yes. Um, and then form factor. You know, Apple needs – they struggle with getting the screen to device ratio right. You know what I'm saying? Seems They're, like it. My phone is huge, and it's only a 5.5, and it's like the size of your 6.0. Yes. I have a 598 technically, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's pretty much six. So your screen is screen. bigger, but the device is like almost the, the same. The bezels all around are short and yeah. yeah, thin. And Top and bottom bezels on iPhones have got to shrink significantly. I know. They, they're just too big. <laughs> Even if you made the phone a little thicker, who cares? Like, it's already so freaking thin. And you got your camera poking out anyway. You might as well shave off a couple millimeters on the top and bottom, make it a little thicker so the camera's even and yes then you're set right and even if they added more battery which is a lot of mm-hmm. a lot of youtubers complain about is hey you guys should just add more battery don't have a protruding camera and right. i kind of agree with them i don't like yeah. protruding cameras yeah it, no they're not good it once you put a little case i have like the world's thinnest case on mine it's more like a skin but it's a case uh-huh. once you put that on it doesn't protrude anymore because it's like a two millimeter or one millimeter protruding hammer lens. that's true but if you don't like a case like some people ugh. i hate cases but i didn't yeah. i didn't have a case on this phone that's why it's scratched I well agree, yeah. you know you kind of have to have it yeah you got to put some front glass on there and you got to put some stupid little ugly case on there and... <laughs> <laughs> so what else are you excited about at the uh, apple event you know we, we talked well, about the apple tv that's really exciting for us yeah ios 9 is kind of cool i mean uh, there's one feature about it that i just kind of found out about is the they have battery saving mode on it now um oh nice i didn't know that yeah and uh it's 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 not like the ultra battery saving mode of samsung that really gives you like 40 days of battery life <laughs> so um, this one? <laughs> it's more like the basic battery saving mode it, it like turns off like push notifications and um just does a little things you won't really notice a huge difference you, it'll cut off a lot of graphics kind of things a lot of people go in and turn off anyway um, that's true but yeah and and uh and how much longer do, do you think it's going to give you like would seen, it give you a couple hours you feel i haven't seen any tests of it or anything i don't worry about it because i have the bigger one and that's like the best battery life out of any phone out there that's true opinion. the 6s can make it through the day just fine the six dude. plus yeah the, the six plus yeah i mean i just come i I'm a really heavy user, and I come home with thirty to forty percent. That's every, amazing. Every night, there are so that means you're getting your four hours of solid screen on time, yeah. like no problem. Oh yeah, and the Voxer app drains it pretty bad, though. I will charge it if we're if we're talking on Voxer all day or something. But that's true. There's always those apps. Uh huh. Voxer's you just pretty heat up bad, your though. phone. <laughs> Voxer's pretty bad. Yes, and it's funny that we use it because we could just make a phone call. But I think we li- <laughs> I think we like that we can't interrupt each other on there. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. I, honestly, I agree. I like it better. Plus, you're not on the phone. Like, yeah, you know how we drive at work too much. So. Yeah, and I like that you can. Uh, I can send you a message, and you just listen to it whenever you listen. Whenever to it. I can, and yeah. then you send me one back, and I listen to it whenever I listen to it. It's like a text, but you can have the natural conversation of speaking. Yes, right. Yeah, so everybody, Boxer is pretty cool like that. Yeah, and they don't sponsor us, so <laughs> we that's a true statement. No sponsors right now. Once we start we once we start too. talking about how great Netflix is or something stupid. Then, <laughs> well, a great actually Netflix is really cool, but yes. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> when we start talking about some home meal plan that's delivered to your house and makes it easier <laughs> to cook, then you'll know that we're maybe finally making money. <laughs> Um, so yeah, um, I, I, lot, I mean, there's so much to talk about. I feel like we've kind of exhausted Apple for the most mm-hmm. part. I do want to talk a little bit about my phone situation at least. Um, because yeah. I want to talk about the Moto X Pure. That is All a right. cool phone, right? You, you turned me onto this phone a few days I ago. I like that phone, honestly. I, I have an Nexus 6 and I believe that phone is better than an Nexus 6 and it's cheaper, people. Yeah, yeah the Moto X Pure does not sponsor us by the way <laughs> the moto x pure 
is three ninety nine. This is a brand new. This is a brand new device, Moto X, brand new edition. Phone. Yes, starting at three hundred and ninety nine dollars, so ninety nine cents. What makes it good? What's cool about the Moto X PR? I think the Moto X is finally a phone that that combines, you know, like you know, this last year's flagships were humongous, you know. So this phone right. is actually now downgraded on the screen size a little bit, so it's a five seven. Mm-hmm. But then it took all of the good stuff from last year, made it better, so made it a little bit smaller. Yeah. Give you a better processor, give you the latest OS. SD um, card slot. Yes, that's a big deal. So you only Last need to year's buy phone this, didn't have an SD card. You only need to buy the 16 gig model. So the one you actually will buy is the 399 model. I believe that's the hot model there. And it's actually sold out on Amazon as of right now. Yeah. The black version of it. Yeah. Cool phone though. Yeah, it's definitely, I would can comfortably say it's the most competitively priced smartphone ever. Let me go through the specifications really quick. So we have a 5.7 inch Quad HD display, which I don't know how I feel about that. I don't have mixed feelings about Quad HD. It sounds cool, but then you realize it's pointless and uses all your battery. It uses more battery. Yeah. Then you have a top rated 21 megapixel camera. Do you know much about that one? Uh, it's <laughs> More <laughs> pixels doesn't equal better camera. A lot of people do think that, but it's not quite true. Um, the, true. the 8 megapixels on my phone make a much better image than the 21 megapixels on that phone. When compared so, to that one. Yeah, yeah and you got to have quality products not just quantity but it's it's an upgrade from the old phone and i've seen a lot of reviews on it and it does okay yes um, i like how it has now a digital stabilization yeah feature which mm-hmm. last phone didn't it, it makes yeah. focusing really fast so it is a bit better camera than last time but one of the real reasons you are paying so much more for an iphone is for the actual real quality of the camera and the optics and the slow motion and the video. It's 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 it doesn't hold a candle to a higher end phone, but it's okay if if you don't really take that many pictures with your That's phone. That's true. It'll take a picture and you'll be able to use it, but eh, eh I think yeah, that, no, no. I, it's not very good. But continue. What else about it? No, that's true. I mean, that 21 megapixel camera is not going to convert to an iPhone. But again, the phone's only four hundred dollars. It's it's less you can't less, really beat on it. You know, less than half of the price of the phone I have in my pocket yes. right now. So it's I don't think it's less than half of the camera. So that's actually right. not bad. Exactly. It has a 4K video capture. All day battery is what they claim. Uh, that's yet to be seen. Yeah. Turbo power charging. That is actually a cool feature. That you can get cool. ten hours of battery life. In just 15 minutes. How do you feel about that? Well, that that's awesome. I mean, my phone does not charge anywhere near that fast, even if I plug it into, like, the iPad charger. Minutes. So. Isn't that crazy? 15 minutes, you plug it in, and... And I think that might hurt your phone, like, long-term, if you just use your iPad to charge it, your iPad charger. Yeah, I don't use it. I'm just saying I have. No, I, right. absolutely. No, just saying, like, how it's cool how they give you this bigger charging device, and it yeah. doesn't hurt your phone, like, turbo power. Pretty cool. Right, yeah. And then pure Android experience, obviously. Well, that's um, a big deal, pure yeah. Android experience. That's kind of one thing I wanted to talk about is people are go- are realizing that all this bloat that Samsung and all these other people throw on their phones is slowing down their phone, and they never touch that crap, and Long it's worthless. It and yes. so these pure Android phones, the Nexus is obviously the purest of the pure, are are getting popular, and you know people don't want all that extra crap on there. And so that's a big deal to me. I yeah. you're, you're, you promised me this Moto X would get updates very fast, and I believe you. I'm pretty sure it will because it's it used to be a, a Google company, and, uh-huh. and ever since that they had a little bit of stock ownership. Yeah, they kind of changed the direction of how they're putting their products out. So yeah, yeah they're they're turning into Nexuses essentially, and it's kind of nice because they run better, they get updates sooner, they're safer that way. It's a Motorola like way high quality and I feel of like it's a good and stuff as like far that. as other Android phones like LG, HTC. I think Motorola's got it going on in quality for sure. Yeah, and like you're saying, your 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 the antenna on your Nexus Six blows the antenna of my iPhone Six. That's true, no out question. Of the water. We can't. We out have. Of the water you know, one hand experience on that. And yeah. yes, same location that we might have different service coverages. The, the antenna is and we both slightly. Use, we both use T-Mobile and yes. you have a way better service everywhere. Seems that way. Yeah. I don't think we've like ever... I have an extra bar. Yeah. Just having a Motorola antenna. And that's pretty, 
that's saying something, you know. At your house, I had no service. It wasn't even trying. It just said no service like I was in the middle of the ocean, you know what I mean? <laughs> and you're like LTE, surfing the net and stuff. We have the same it's provider. It's interesting. I was really low bars right there. But, yeah, it almost gives you that extra bar. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, everyone, I'd recommend if you have issues um, connected to – to your wireless network provider where you live, mm-hmm. I think a Motorola way would help you. Motorola. That extra bar, you know? Absolutely. So. Absolutely. So I, I'm struggling because I actually – the reason I was even considering an Android phone because you know how much I'm against them. I've had like <laughs> three of them. I've given them three tries and they – disappoint me every time third, third time is a charm you know yeah you, you might <laughs> um <laughs> Just I, I guess i haven't had two this would be the third um uh yeah i the only reason i really wanted to go to it is because of the most exciting product invented this year and what is that gonna be <laughs> it's the galaxy gear s2 have you yeah. seen this thing have you watched anything on what, this what is it whatsoever what is a galaxy gear s2 so it's a smartwatch from okay. samsung um, they're old, you know, the old Samsung watches, you're searching it, you punk, no, just kidding. Um, <laughs> the old, the old Samsung watches always only worked on, on Samsung, right? And so you had to have the f- Samsung phones to use them. Yeah. It was almost like a, like a, uh, what do you call that? Yeah. You have to have the Samsung device to be able to buy a Samsung accessory. It was mm-hmm. also always considered a Samsung accessory. Yeah. And now they're opening the new one up to all Android. Um, that's with, really exciting as long as it's relatively new there's some there's some uh you have to have like 4.4 4, um android 4.4 4 and they have small requirements for yeah, it, but... a 1.5 gigs of ram which actually my phone doesn't even have that which is funny <laughs> um but it runs so good it doesn't even matter but yeah uh yes. so yeah this watch has me so excited it's what i like smart watches and i miss having one and i you know, so what what's wrong with all the smartwatches before this one? Why do you like this one so much more? It has everything that a smartwatch should have already had. So okay. smartwatches are coming out and they're big, they're bulky. You know. They were always square too. Like yeah. that's not the best design. No, it's ugly, dude. It's so yeah. ugly. Um, you know, you're constantly putting your finger on the screen, really not intuitive to use. Um that's very true. bad battery life. Hard to charge apples you know come up with some ideas that are better they got their little uh what do you call it on the side there i'm drawing a blank but they have their um scrolling okay anyway um, their crown yeah yeah and that that's what they use that was kind of their answer to save themselves from always touching the screen but the moto x man this yes Thing. Not the Moto X. Come on, Dean. The Gear Galaxy Gear Two. The Samsung Galaxy Gear Two. Is, How do you actually select things with it? Because it looks cool. It's got I'm a rotating it right bezel. It looks like rotating if you look at the classic, bezel. the classic uh-huh. looks just like a really high end premium real watch. It looks like a watch. It doesn't look like a big old weird ugly square screen on your wrist that pokes out and everybody's gonna be like, "What the hell is that?" It just <laughs> looks like a really classy, nice watch. The, the the display is amazingly brilliant, vibrant, just yes. beautiful display. Yeah, like Samsung knows just how. Awesome watch faces. <laughs> the the watch isn't like super thick. It's got a rotating bezel for selecting, and you see that they've designed the OS. It's Tizen. It's not uh-huh. Android Wear. It's Tizen, which I think my personal experience is better. And okay. and the, that's the OS on the watch, and it it's designed for that rotating bezel, and it's. It's just nice. I want to touch one. I want to hold one. Every video I've watched, people are like, this bezel feels right. It's got these little clicks. It just feels nice. Cool. Um, you kind of get used to where your apps are. You almost don't even have to look at the watch to select certain apps because you just know how many clicks to go, you know? That's really exciting. And it just looks right. And it does everything right, you know? And there's so nothing So you're really wrong with for it. the whole bezel rotating uh Vessel, like the way of selecting that, you think that's the best way to do it, right? Like the Moto 360 was a circular smartwatch, which we got excited about like a year ago, but really bad battery life. When you look at it, the design isn't that pretty. It has a notch taken out of the screen, it's not even a full circle screen. Yeah, that kind and of sucks. It doesn't like, have a selector either, you have to do everything no, with your finger, everything. and it's just wrong, you know. It but is. It's just it, it's cool at the time, but it's like, when is the watch gonna? be what it's supposed to be that's true and the gear the gear s2 is now finally the first watch smart watch that is 
it's what it should be. It's what they should have always been. Okay. And you know, and so it's I have exciting because it's small be so specs nice. looking at their website here, and it's saying that the screen is a 1.2 inch full circular S AMOLED display it's at AMOLED, 302 man. PPI. 302, dude, it's so That's clear. That's impressive. It's so clear, and then they're it's also a claiming to have a network. Uh, you know much about that? Having Bluetooth so, and 3G. So typically, your your phone would hook up through Bluetooth to your your watch would hook up to your phone through Bluetooth. That's okay. standard, but they're coming out with uh, it's going to come out later and only in select areas. But they're coming out with a 3G model. It's a standalone. 3G model. It's like so its own phone. So what you're saying is I can just buy the watch and not even need a phone? Yes. How would that work? But that's the problem is that's what I'm wondering is, okay, then <laughs> what am I doing with How it? am I like, getting notifications? How am I getting my text? And... Do I have to have service through somebody? Do I have to go in and, and pay 10 yeah. bucks a month to T-Mobile to have it? I think so. Amazing questions. I mean, so, I just don't know. Because I was kind of excited about it at first. I was like, oh, my God, I can use it with my iPhone. And I'm like, wait, it, I'm not going to get my – it's not going to be connected to my phone. That's what you want it to do. <laughs> That's <laughs> you know? true. It almost seems like you could use it as its own phone. It's a phone, basically. Um, but well, they do have little microphones and uh, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, and speakers. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> but, interesting though so you're thinking maybe a moto x you know and a samsung gear s2 so like that would be that, my that's setup. pulling you towards android right now yeah i could go in and buy a moto x pure for next to nothing own it yes. straight up my t-mobile bill would instantly drop 31 dollars, actually 41 um oh, wow. and uh, because i would get rid of jump obviously that's and, right and it's 40 dollars to get the the new um the new phone I'm getting through Apple anyway. So it would save me 40 a month. Obviously I got to come up with the money for the phone, but it, 400 it, to get it. I would, but, you know, I would, that's not as hard. You right. Know? I would own the phone and it would be easy to buy that device. And then, you know, I just put in, I already have a 64 gigabyte SD card floating around from other things I've done. And I just throw that in. I'd have plenty of space on that phone and it would be awesome. Like I could buy the watch when it comes out next month and I would be so happy. I would be in it. I'd be in it still less <laughs> than the cost of my phone that yes. I have now in my pocket. It would. It would by be having like both half, of those. Less than half. Holy For cow. the phone, but then I'm saying even with the watch on there as well. Oh, all together, yeah. If you went to Apple and said, I want the same setup, it's going to cost you over 1000 What would it be? Like it was like 12 Yeah. And I don't know so how much. So we're talking a huge difference there. We don't know how much the Galaxy Gear S2 is going to cost, but I'm assuming 399 is the high end. That might be the classic. That's true. Um, which is a lot, but a lot of their stuff's been coming out in the 249, 299 range, which would be really nice. 249 would be amazing. I would buy one. But it's not going <laughs> to. It's not going to be more than 400. I hope to God. That's true. It depends what bands they put on it. You know, all the quality, different parts. 3G one's obviously going to be more. Yes, I agree. And have less battery life. So what's stopping assume. you? You feel like you don't know how it's all going to work together? And what's all stopping stuff? me is that Android's an inferior shitty OS. <laughs> and I, I'm never happy with it, even it's if I buy not, the most expensive I, I'm phone. Just fine with my Nexus 6. I think it's a wonderful phone. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but it is it is a downgrade. It would be somewhat of a downgrade for you. Somewhat. You go, I, that's go, how I feel anyway. To I go from some credit, I think the the Moto X Pure Edition is a great phone. Yeah, I mean, it should be okay. <laughs> I like it too. It's priced right. That's what's cool about it. Yes, it's uh, like, four hundred dollars. You don't get it better than this phone. Yeah, I don't, yeah. What it, yeah, absolutely. Whenever you look at it, unless this new Nexus devices that are coming out later, which I believe the Nexus Five X reportedly costing the same. Yeah, that's going to make it a little more difficult to choose it, but. Regardless, yeah. this phone is priced amazingly well. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Um, I kind of wanted to switch gears a little bit real quick. Because I know that you just got a new stereo in your car. And I'm actually kind of excited about this because it relates to me yes. buying an iPhone or not getting out of the iPhone world and going into the Android world. That was one of the cons on my pros and cons list was Androids don't don't hook up to my car worth jack. And iPhones hook up so nice to the car, and you're saying they've solved that sort of, right? Sort of, yeah. You have this uh, big company now, so Pioneer. Mm -hmm. um, This year, they um, added uh, a couple of new radio stereo 
receivers for the vehicles. Right. And yes, they added this really cool feature that's called AOA 2.0 support for Android, which basically enables your Android to play music and streaming apps and control basic functionality. Okay. Just using your USB. Oh. How, how cool is that? That's way nice. We needed so, that. <laughs> for a long time, all you could do is throw a Bluetooth um, mm-hmm. pairing to be able to do all this. Yeah. And now you can actually charge your phone, listen to it, and you don't have to drain your battery by having Bluetooth on. Right. Um, which, you know, for Android and stuff, it's a little more sensitive. You, anything you have on is going to drain your battery much faster than, a, than an iPhone would. Right. So it's cool. It charges your phone, and for the first time ever, you can play your music the way your phone has it. In nice. the library, because nice. that's the big difference. You that could, was one you of the could... yeah. That was one of the things I noticed when I bought that um, Android phone. When I switched, yes. from, I had the iPhone 5s, and I got you know got the Android. Was I plugged it in? And I was like the, the Galaxy the, S5 plugged in, and the car doesn't what, even what did know. It, do? it just you can't do anything. It just thinks you plugged <laughs> in like nothing really. I couldn't even access files in ways that I've heard other people were able to. It was like blocked. Like it didn't do anything. No, it charged my phone. That's all. I yes. Did. And for the ones I had after that, you know, like the Nexus 5 and the 6, uh-huh. before this technology came out, you plug it in and it just basically thought you plugged in a, a thumb drive. Mm-hmm. Um, so it went to your music folder, started playing things in that order, which, you know, it's not organized. And I couldn't and, even get it to do that. I yeah. couldn't even get in there. And, and yeah, and then I, and then so you have to go out and buy the stupid aux cable and you plug it in. It's like, the signal to noise ratio is low. It sounds like yeah, crap, it does. you know. And you're like, oh, I gotta crank this up now. And they don't have as good sound cards as as the iPhone. So yeah, USB connection no. is a lot nicer. You get a little bit better sound for sure. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, all the new devices, all their new car stereo receivers for 2015 have this AOA 2.0 support, which is what you want AOA if you're looking for 2.0. a stereo. Yes. Okay. It's called AOA 2.0, and it'll be right on the box, one of the main features that they added. And, and this this wonderful. Pioneer is brand new. Like, you're the first guy to get it, right? I mean, you're yeah. first in line. Really exciting. Yeah, so I got the model NVHX 380BT. It's going to be hard to remember. But yeah. One of, the new, one of their new, basically, digital media receivers. They only have two right now, and that's their cheaper model at $95. Nice. And this device just barely came out. Like, um, it was supposed to release in September, and I had been looking online, and I didn't know I was going to be able to get it before the show. And it popped up, and I was able to ship it in time. Nice. Got yeah, it installed two days ago. Yeah, and, and it's, it's not, not even on Best there. Buy. You can't like, go out yes. and get it. Yeah, and so. But if you want this stereo, you just go to Pioneer website. It's right there. You can get, ship it. Give me an every- overall. Uh, impression then what, what do you think of how is it living up to what it's promising is it how's it working out so basically you can plug it in you can listen to your music it took a little bit of setting uh, going to the settings and actually set it up uh-huh. so you go through your settings and you find the um, i believe it's with the usb and you just change memory to streaming nice. and that's going to allow you to just stream immediately out of your out of your usb instead of Trying to do something else with it, like connect to your phone or something. Nice. To make calls. But anyway, nice. the things I don't like would be like, for example, if you had it connected on Bluetooth, you'd be able to get the song information and the artist. Right. And all of that will scroll down, you know, like normal. Uh-huh. But when you plug it in, all you get is an app. You know, all <laughs> it says is app. But it plays everything in order. You know, it's it's we're getting there, you know. Like now we're able to finally kind of be close to what the iPhone can do. Yeah. But you don't get everything just yet. But it is nice, though. You don't look at the phone name and information, so it's not a deal breaker for me as no. much. Well, cool. But anyway, yeah, I'm happy so with it. So you're happy with it, and it's yes. 100 bucks, 95 bucks. 95 bucks for the radio. I think it's shipped for 106. They charge you taxes and five dollars shipping. Nice, wonderful radio. I recommend it awesome. for sure. Yeah, that makes me excited because that was one of those things. I was just like, really, like. This is dumb. I don't want to listen to music this way. And like you said, you can do Bluetooth and stuff. I kind of avoided it because I didn't like talking on the phone through Bluetooth. I just it just seemed cleaner to plug it in. Um, I actually just recently started true. Bluetoothing it, um, testing it out, seeing how well I like that better. It's kind of cool. The music just starts playing and the phone's in your pocket. You know. It's like, oh, cool. Yeah, but yeah. my biggest beef with it was battery life. You know, you, on Android, you if you don't have a Bluetooth. If you don't use Bluetooth at work and then you have to leave it on for work yeah. and when you go to bed, it's kind of annoying just so that it works on your car every time. Well, cool, man. And that's why I was really excited that I could just plug it in, charge it, and avoid having Bluetooth on all the time. 
Oh, cool. um, so yeah, yeah, it's a cool. It, the radio itself is gonna have Bluetooth connectivity though, and hands-free calling. Nice. Um, it comes with a little, little mic if you if you take the time to install it in your car, and it seems to work okay. We made a test call the other day. Nice. And uh, how did you feel about uh, doing the test call with me on the, uh, from the radio? It, it wasn't too bad. You know, it was like you're using kind of like you're on speakerphone, which is what you'd expect from a, something like that. You know? Yeah. Um, not terrible, but not amazing either. But fine. Absolutely fine, fine. Yeah, and I was yeah. on the freeway, and we were able to pretty much hear each other, which is the main thing. Yeah, and uh, again, good radio. Check it out. Nice. I'll definitely check it out if I switch back to the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, man, I think we've been talking about an hour. Can you believe is that? It? Right. We did a half an hour yeah. show the first time, and um, you know, and we got to like three of the ten notes I took. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Is there um, maybe one more or two more you'd like to Well, touch, mainly or? I guess I, I don't want to just talk about myself the whole time, but I kind of wanted to tell you what phone I think I'm going to get because there's okay. been this problem where the first phone I could get was the iPhone 6 Plus, but it was gold. That's true. Yeah, We're it. talking like pre-ordering I have on it pre release date. That's really hard to do. Right? Yeah, I have it pre-ordered. I can go okay. pick it up on release date in the store. Okay. Um, when I realized I could only get a gold, I got it, but then I also – you can do two. That's your max. So I also pre-ordered just a regular iPhone 6S, not the Plus. Um, that's the right color, the color I like. And so I was trying to decide. You know, me and you talked for hours about pros and cons. And so, what's the color you forth. like? Is that going to be the black? It's like what's it called? It's the dark one. This is the dark. The slate one. or yeah. whatever it's called. Okay. Yeah, charcoal or something. Okay. And uh, so we went over pros and cons for hours about that, and we could literally talk all night about. Just That's deciding true. between those two, but then we That's throw true. this Moto X Pure edition in into the, the mix. mix, and that and my that head is cool spinning. Watch, you know, you're so into that watch. Yes. it'd be so heartbreaking not to be able to get it because but... that watch isn't going to work on iPhone. There are rumors that it might open up to iPhone, but how's that even going to work? Ties in, I know. ties in with iOS. You're going to be missing out on features. You know, and that's the yes. thing is Android Wear just opened up to iOS, not Tizen, but Android Wear. But you're you're lacking so many features when you do that. Yeah, and how does that work? Is you have to have an extra app, and it's not yeah, have all the features. It, it, yeah, you know, it's not native. I haven't watched any videos on it. I read an article about it, and it's yeah. it's something that's like, well, you can do it, but it's not that great. <laughs> it's but an if, app. <laughs> but if you have to have an iPhone and you have to have this watch, which is kind of where I'm at actually. Um, okay. But yeah. And then, so we threw the Moto X in a whole different route by going into cheap Androids. I mean, not cheap, but lower end Androids and yeah. getting the watch and being happy with that. Or do I want a small iPhone six or do I want the big gold iPhone six S? Which I, is what you're used to. You have a regular iPhone six plus right uh -huh. now. And every, so how do you feel like, well, every 10 minutes I feel different. <laughs> I don't blame you. Right. There's so many options. Right before we talk, we did the show, I was leaning towards the big gold one because I don't want to give up my big phone. I like the screen size. Uh -huh. um, and that's probably what I'm going to get. That's okay. We'll know by the end of the next show. We'll know what yes. I got. And I'll be. I'll probably put up some YouTube reviews of it because I am getting it on release date, which is kind of cool. Um, yes. I mean, other people managed to get these things like before they're even designed somehow but yeah um i'll still be able to do maybe like a stupid unboxing or something that would be cool guys my yeah. unboxing videos are a little different because i don't like go over the box like some of those unboxing videos are ridiculous like they spend like 10 minutes the box has tape on it the box does this and i'm like dude yeah, nobody gives a, a shit like nobody cares like they're watching it to see how the device looks how it comes how it starts up how it runs you know like Yes. So my unboxings might be a little different, but I plan on that. Whatever phone I get, I plan on that. That'll come to YouTube. That's so. good. Well, I hope the six plus does it. Then we'll see the six S plus for now. <laughs> we're gonna have to see. Absolutely, man. Well, cool. yeah, I think we're pretty much out of time. <laughs> All right, let's do that then. <laughs> to be honest, so um, I think <laughs> we're just gonna go ahead and sign off. Uh, thanks for listening to episode two. My name's Dean Hansen. And Ronnie here. All right, see always. you guys later. Have a good one. See ya.